Oh, what's cracking, peeps? T Money up in the heezy. Happy Monday afternoon. Uh, so before I get into this collection update video, I just want to say that I apologize to Reject Films. Uh, apparently, I just well, I just posted my um, my contest drawing for the uh, giveaway I was doing, and uh, he hit me up and said, uh, "You forgot about me, bro." And I totally don't know what happened, but I did not see um, your name in there or your contest entry, so um, I spaced it, and I apologize, so we've already talked, and I will make it right, but first and foremost, I wanted to apologize to you, bro, because I would have loved to have had your support and entry to have added into that drawing, so um, my apologies. So, uh, before I get into this, I also want to say, did anybody see the um, Walking Dead season finale last night? I thought it was fantastic. Man, it was good. Um, and if anybody wants to talk about it, let's uh, start a little comment section or uh, um, discussion in the comment section below because the only thing I could think of after seeing that episode is it left me completely satisfied with what's going to happen or with the future, I guess. Um, maybe a little concerned about um, it get the show getting boring, but it gave me what I wanted for the first time in a long time. I felt fulfilled and satisfied from the direction that the show went in in last night's finale. So uh, let me know your thoughts below. Don't want to spoil anything in the actual video. So viewer beware. Uh, we will possibly, potentially have a discussion in the comment section below of the video. So stay away from that if you haven't seen it yet. But I thought it was great. Um, so now without further ado, let's get into this little update I have. I have seven titles roughly. Uh, Criterion Collection. A new company called Signal One. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome and Scream Factory, I believe, and Kino Lorber. So, we'll start with the uh, Criterion. First up, I have Branded to Kill. Seijun Suzuki's Branded to Kill. Uh, apparently, this is one of his weirdest, most bat, bat shit crazy films. Um, and apparently, he got fired, I think, or when he presented the film to the production company, they fired him on the spot. Um, it read, it said that in the synopsis of this film, but it's crazy and it's about a. Um, Yakuza assassin who is in, obsessed with sniffing rice and he uh, basically gets mixed up in some sort of um, job that he's supposed to do and then he gets uh, basically ends up as a target himself. So I don't know. It's supposedly crazy. So we'll check that one out. Um, I wanted to show you guys uh, this one because I've always really been curious about Che Guevara and learning more about him. So this is a... It says, far from a controversial biopic, uh, Soderbergh's film about Che Guevara is a fascinating exploration of the rev revolutionary icon. And, um, yeah, so I look forward to learning more about him. Apparently, it's a fantastic performance uh, by uh, Benicio Del Toro, so that's awesome. And, yeah, I've always really been um, interested in Che Guevara, so uh, hopefully this I will learn more about it. I think it's... I'm not sure if this is exactly fiction or what, but yeah, uh, we'll find out. Um, next up, we have a release from a new company, one that I'm not familiar with, Signal One. And uh, Kino Lorber also put this film out, The Earth Dies Screaming. Really cool. I think it's a 1964 sci-fi futuristic uh, film. It's not so much horror, more um, sci-fi, uh, and it's basically about the earth being destroyed by these uh robots and um i think it's got the writer of chosen survivors behind it and it's directed by uh the guy who did horror of dracula uh terence fisher um and yeah so it's basically a uh futuristic sci-fi action thriller flick about saving the world before the human race becomes extinct um dealing with uh, I don't know if they're man-made robots or if they're alien robots. I think they're aliens, but anyway. Playing on all of the fears from the 60s, I believe. Uh, next up, we have an awesome film that I've never seen before. But So I think my boys, uh, D-Boogie86, the guys from 22 Shots, had recommended this film to me a long time ago. And I totally forgot that this was the one. Uh, Mr. Majestic starring Charles Bronson. I love me some Bronson action flicks. And uh, this one is supposed to be amazing. And I thought that I had this in my Keener... Keener in my Keener Lorber collection, um, Kino, but uh, but I didn't, and it's basically a revenge flick about 
Uh, Charles Bronson plays an ex-con slash Vietnam vet. He's just trying to live a uh, sustain a life, um, uh, a good life, a uh, fair life, farming, and uh, you know to stay away, stay out of trouble. But these local, I don't know what they are, bandits or misfits and uh, corrupt cops kind of fuck with him, and basically the good old Chucky Bronson is forced to come out and seek revenge on these assholes. So, uh, yeah, just a really good revenge thriller, action flick type deal. Can't go wrong. And uh, apparently there's some really good wilderness, uh, like farming, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, backwoods confrontations and stuff like that. So I love me some scenic movies always as well, action flicks, horror flicks, whatever you want to you wanna call them. I love me some backwoods scenery. Uh, next up is a film from, a new one from Scream Factory. We have Daughters of Satan. Uh, this sounded really, really cool. I've never seen this movie before. It's from 1972. Uh, it's basically a story about a dude played by Tom Selleck whose wife uh, resembles one of three witches in a painting and she becomes obsessed with this painting and finds the other two witches in the local town and it turns out that there's... Um, it's not just that his wife resembles one of the three witches. There's more of a connection uh, to to them than meets the eye, I guess. And basically, they come together, the three witches, and um, all hell breaks loose. Basically, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a spellbinding thriller that deals with w deals with witches and co ancient covens and all that good stuff. So I'm really excited for it. It's from in color from 1972. Uh, Daughters of Satan. So awesome. Can't go wrong with some Tom Selleck. And last but not least, I have three titles from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. My April lot came in. So Blue Vengeance is one that I'm not familiar with. Uh, really cool reversible cover artwork. Of course, you've got the beautiful slips in all three of these. Uh, newly scanned restorations of all three films. Packed full of special features. Commentary tracks, interviews, conversations about the films, the whole nine yards. Uh, this one says, Convicted murderer Mark Trex has just escaped from an asylum and is headed to New York City to track down the members of his favorite, favorite childhood band. Uh, it sounds like uh, Charlie, Charlie Manson type deal. Uh, Warriors of the Inferno. Believing that their occult hit song, which told, of, which told of Satan and Death, is true, Trex is determined to see if the band members have held up their part of their pact with evil. However, cop on the edge Mickey McArdle is hot on his trail and determined to end the serial killer spree. A strange mashup of, of horror and action film, Jay Christian in, in conversions, whoa, or however you pronounce that, Blue Vengeance combines gory killings with drug-addled underground rock scene clubs and corrupt police procedure that sets in the gritty world of the late 80s New York, love me some of that atmosphere, and comes with complete I'm sorry, and comes complete with visits to Times Square and the infamous music club CBGB's. Vinegar Syndrome presents this Blu-ray presents this Blu-ray debut of the director to video direct to video rarity newly restored from its original camera negative. So very cool. Very excited for that one. It sounds really fun. And another one that I've never seen before, The Terror. Um it was buried a hundred years but never laid to rest. I will open this one up for you guys. Uh, because I want to read you the synopsis, but uh, really, really nice cover artwork here. Reversible cover on each side of the slips. Then you've got interior, your choice of two covers in the interior. Uh, but first of all, special features include newly scanned and restored uh, 2K from the original 35mm camera negative, extensive audio interviews with the director, brand new video interviews with the director, screenwriters, actors, actresses, uh, deleted and extended scenes, reversible cover, English subtitles. The rever reversible cover artwork is that right there, so you can see that. Uh, the film, though, it says, The country estate of filmmaker James Garrick has been haunted for centuries by a mysterious and deadly curse. Everyone in his family line comes to a gruesome end at the hand of an unknown supernatural assailant. When Garrick's long-lost cousin Anne unexpectedly arrives at his secluded manor, mayhem and bloodshed soon follow. But is Anne the person behind these acts of carnage, or could something more horrifying be afoot? Taking inspiration from Italian Gothic horror films of Giallo's, Norman J. Warren's terror features lurid, gelled lighting, bizarre plot twists, and copious amounts of brutal bloodshed. A classic of British-made 70s horror, Vinegar Syndrome proudly presents terror to Blu-ray, newly restored, and featuring all of its jaw-dropping carnal, carnal footage in fully intact. So excellent, from 1978, sounds really, really awesome. What more can you say? 
right up my alley. Um, and again, I love the choice of all the different choices of cover artworks you can go with. It's really, really nice. And last but not least, probably one of my uh, most highly anticipated releases, Bloodhook. I love this movie. It's a really, really cheeseball slasher from, I think, the early 90s. Uh, 1986, I'm sorry, the year I was born. But it's bad. It's so bad that it's good, that type deal. Uh, it's basically about a family that's traveling to this... Um, camp in uh, where does it take place Mis not Missouri um uh miss uh, uh I can't remember and it's shot there too but anyway they're going to this like um fishing uh contest type thing on this lakeside town and there is a killer on the loose who uses a big badass fish hook to lure you in no pun intended um and yeah it's awesome I love it uh great kills cheesy cheesy acting um, and that accent, man, I wish I could pinpoint, I can't remember where it's, uh, Mesquite, I can't remember the, uh, 17 years ago, no, it doesn't say. I'll read you guys the synopsis just for the hell of it, though. Uh, it says, 17 years ago, Peter's grandfather went missing under mysterious circumstances. Now, Peter and his friends have returned to the placid Wisconsin, thank you, shot and filmed in Wisconsin, town, to check out his inherited lake house and to partake in the annual Muskie Madness fishing competition. Soon after his arrival, Peter begins to sense that something isn't quite right, but none of his friends, nor the local sheriff, will believe him. But as town folk and tourists begin to disappear, Peter becomes determined to solve the mystery, as well as that of his grandfather's disappearance, and soon he finds himself facing off against a fishhook-wielding madman. So it's really fun. So you've got your group of teens, or late whatevers, uh, going to stay at their uncle's cabin, and you've also got this local, really, really cheeseball 80s stereotypical local family. I guess it's stereotypical of Wisconsin uh, redneck natives. But it's just the accents in this are so much fun. The dialogue is so much fun. The kills are so much fun. Very far-fetched and unbelievable, but so much fun. And uh, it's just a great one. Um, uh, Troma released this movie on DVD. Of course, I have that. That's where I first heard of it. Um, I think I, well, I have the Blades and Troma 2-pack, and then I have the DVD of bloodhook alone because i loved it so much but really excited to check this one out because it is for the first time ever uh newly scanned and restored in 2k from the original 16 original uh from the 16 millimeter original camera negative we also have a new interview hook line and sinker with the director jim mallon first blood hook an interview with actress lisa todd what's in the tackle box an interview with fx artist jim southers and audio interview with cinematographer and editor marcia com Still galleries, limited edition slipcovers, and a uh, reversible cover, and of course, subtitles. So, really, really awesome release. Uh, the highlight of the, I guess, April um, set or whatever, April um, releases from Vinegar Syndrome, uh, for lack of a better word, but I'm really, line up. Really excited for this one. So guys, that's it. I'm going to stop rambling. Thanks for watching this update. Again, I apologize to you, Reject Films, for uh, not including you in the contest. But I got you, brother. And thank you for your support. So, alright guys, have a great night. Talk to you soon with another update. Peace.